And I call on Alec Rowley to speak to and move the motion in his name. Thank you, President Officer. President Officer, when delivering her speech on the programme for government two weeks ago, Nicola Sturgeon said the time is right to open a discussion about how responsible and progressive use of our taxpayers could help us to build the kind of country that we want to be. I welcome that statement and Labour in this Parliament uh, will work and engage in our country to actively engage in a discussion on this issue. In that speech, the First Minister said, and I quote, the quality of our schools and hospitals, the safety of our streets and communities, the supply of skills and good housing and infrastructure are just as important as rates of tax in growing our economy and attracting investment into Scotland. Nothing there I would disagree with. But I would suggest that the levels of funding available needs to be sufficient to ensure that we can achieve those high quality services and facilities. And that is the question at the core of this debate. For all these areas of public services, after 10 years of SNP government, we do have major problems and issues that must be tackled. The government cannot simply ignore this nor can they legislate their way out of the challenges when many, not all, but many of the solutions require more resources to be made available. So, for example... Murdo Fraser. I'm very grateful to Mr Rowley for giving way. His party will have a position on tax very different to my own party's, but at least it sets out his view. Do you not think it is a bit rich for the Scottish Government to ask the opposition parties to set out their stance on taxation when it won't tell us what its own stance on taxation is. Alec I will, I will, um, I will come to, to the point about the Scottish Government. Um, so make it, making the point about resources and not being able to legislate your way out, an example of that is that, that you can bring in new legislation, as the government is doing, to set targets to eradicate child poverty. But unless you take direct action, the targets will be meaningless and the goal of eradicating child poverty will be nothing more than wishful thinking. On education, you can legislate, you can restructure, you can create more bureaucracy in the process, but unless you address the cuts to the school budgets, you will not tackle the core issues. 4,000 fewer teachers today than when the SNP came to power, 1,000 fewer support staff than when the SNP came to power, class sizes bigger today than when the SNP came to power, spending per pupil across all ages is down. If pupil spend had remained the same as in 2010-11, primary schools would be £726 million better off and secondary schools would be £308 million better off. There are wider issues to be addressed in education, but at the core of the school problem is the cuts. And so when discussing tax, how much we raise matters, but it is also about how governments spend taxpayers' money, the choices that governments make. And on that note, I did read with interest the paper published earlier this week by Professor Jim Gallagher. The paper, Public Spending in Scotland, Relativities and Priorities, reached the following conclusions. Scottish health spending has not kept pace with overall devolved spending. If it had, it would now be around £1 billion per year higher. Increased spending on health has been a lower priority than in England. And as a result, English health spending per person has caught up closer to Scottish levels. Spending on Scottish schools has slipped over the past decade, with English spending catching up despite devolved spending on public services being around 25% higher per person. So when we talk about tax, 
We cannot do so in isolation from spending choices that the SNP Government have made over these last 10 years. We would suggest... Yeah. Kate Forbes. Alex Rowley then welcome our amendment in this debate today, which calls for cutting the 1% pay cap and bringing an end to austerity. Alex Rowley. <laughs> We would suggest, therefore, that part of the national discussion we want to have on tax includes a discussion around the priorities for Scotland in these difficult times. A priority, the pay cap, is something that is welcomed. It has to be paid for. On Friday of last week, the Herald newspaper carried an article stating that the Finance Secretary was asking other parties to send him their latest income tax plans in order to open up discussion on preparations for the draft budget. The point I have already made is that we need to consider spending alongside considering taxing. It is also important to look at income tax in the context of other taxes. And we must consider what other policies the government have that can increase the tax take across Scotland. Over, our view is that the Finance Secretary must drop the proposal to cut air departure tax by 50 per cent. A tax cut that will cost the public purse nearly £190 million. That is a £190 million tax break that Scotland cannot afford whilst our public services buckle due to a lack of finance. This Parliament must also unite around the demand to the UK Government to remove our police and fire services for pay from paying VAT. Police Scotland pays between £23 and £25 million in VAT annually. Scottish Fire and Rescue Services pay approximately £10 million in VAT annually. Now, I know the SNP were repeatedly warned about what would happen on VAT, and that's a fact. But nevertheless, we are where we are, and it is not right, and we must stop this unfairness. The Treasury's principal argument is that because we have moved to a national service, VAT must be paid. However, the Police Service of Northern Ireland and the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service are national services and they do not pay VAT. And since Police Scotland came into being in 2013, several national agencies that operate in England have been given VAT exemptions. So we need the, that VAT exemption for Scotland and I do hope that all parties in this Parliament will unite around a call on the UK Government to sort this and to sort this now. Returning to the FM's the First Minister's speech for Government, Nicola Sturgeon also said, our new planning bill will also help to secure the housing development that the country needs. I do not think it will help unless the Government gets to grips with the problems that are stalling development right now. It is not just the planning system at fault. It is the lack of upfront money to deliver the infrastructure that will enable development like roads, schools and health centres. We need to work with the industry and local authorities to find a way to overcome the barriers, including the very real barrier of front-loading infrastructure costs. We need a national house building strategy, local delivery plans and a skills strategy for Scotland. And we need the investment to make all these things happen. For presiding officer, the more people we get skills for, the more jobs we create, the larger the tax take we have. So it's not just about increasing tax, it's about increasing the numbers of taxpayers and it's about increasing the total tax take for Scotland. But can I say, presiding officer, I was pleased to hear the First Minister has committed to publish a paper on tax before the budget to influence the discussions with other parties. Labour has said that we should use the powers of this Parliament and we did publish our tax proposals for last year's budget. 
We said that we would put a penny on the basic and higher rate of taxation and introduce an additional rate of 50p for those with over £150,000 a year in order to invest in public services. We set out what this would mean for people and let me set it out again. If you earn below £21,000, I'm sorry, I have to make progress. If you earn below £21,000, you would not pay a penny more in income tax now than you did last year. If you earn £28,000, you would now be paying just over £1 more a week in income tax. This is £65 a year. If you earn £41,000, you would now be paying an extra £3.90 a week in income tax, just over £200 a year. Anyone earning £61,000, like MSPs in this place, you would now be paying an extra £10 a week under our proposals, £526 a year. And if you are a government minister earning £90,000 a year, you would now be paying £17 more a week, around £900 more a year. At a time when we desperately need investment in our public services and in driving Scotland's economy, it is right to consider using the taxpayers of our Parliament in a progressive way, ensuring that those who are able to pay a bit more do so. The SNP, the SNP has voted against introducing a 50p top rate of income tax on the highest earners eight times since 2015. Analysis confirmed by the Scottish Parliament Information Centre shows that Labour's amendments to the two previous budgets for 1617 and 1718 would have raised just over £1 billion in additional tax revenue compared to the tax plans that were passed by the SNP. Using data provided by HMRC, it is evident that not only has the total income of wealthier people in Scotland, that is those earning over £150,000, increased by 68% between 2011 and 14-15, but the number of wealthier people almost doubled between 2010-11 and 17-18. Now, I am not opposed to wealth. But those who have a bit more must surely be asked to make a bigger contribution towards a better Scotland on the grounds that they can afford to do so and it benefits all of us if we live in a more fair and more equal society. So we say it is no longer acceptable that the SNP government protect the richest whilst cutting services for the poorest. A millionaire... <laughs> A millionaire has paid less than £2 a week extra in income tax because directly of SNP policies. We are happy to present our tax policies to the government and enter into a discussion. But on one thing we are clear, they need to change theirs. Exactly 15 years ago, when the NHS faced enormous problems, it was our Labour government that stepped in and doubled the budget. Today, many of our public services face enormous problems and there is a desperate need for investment in services, in people and in infrastructure. It is time once again to make the case for a tax rise. For those who can pay a bit more to do so through a progressive tax system and to build a more fair, more just and better Scotland. I move the motion in my name.